Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage. Um, you don't find us in the garage for this one. We are in France. We're at a lovely hotel, La Chatrouse. This is in Goni, just out, it's Bethune, just about 15 miles south of Calais, because we're on a road trip and we're in the Project 7. This is part two of a vi three videos I'm hoping to do. Part one was going down to Hampton Court Concours, and this part two one is the bit we're doing in France. And what we're going to do today, our end destination is Antibes, south of France, but I want to just see how I can make the journey a little bit more interesting. Basically, you can either blast about 850 miles from here down an auto route and turn off on the Antibes turning, or you can go down to Lyon and get to Avignon, turn left, and then there's a scenic road that then links on to the route Napoleon. So that's what we're heading to do today. I have to say, this is a really quite a nice place to stay. I, I always, I went on your tunnel down uh, to here last night. We arrived here, I don't know, about 10 o'clock last night. And it just makes the next day's travel in France so much easier if you dash across on the Eura tunnel in the evening and start your day in France. The roads are much quieter in France. You know how much you've got to do. You know, 566 miles, I think it is, on the auto route before we turn off. Sounds a vast distance, but in France, the miles just tick on by. It's a bit monotonous, it has to be said, but um, it's all good. Now, I thought I'd just sort of show you on the Project 7. People say, oh, it's got a tiny boot. It's not, fine, it's not that tiny, but you're a bit sneaky with it. We've put the roof on find on motorways and things it's just calmer if you have the roof up but I these are our bags here so how do you get the bags in this boot well first of all the roof I store these are the bags to store the roof in. if you can see those I've cut away the top of the boot there because on a project 7 this is where the roof normally fits on a normal F type and on the uh, Project 7 you have this sort of cover here with this hoop and there is no access to that, that doesn't open but if you cut away the top of there you've got loads of space and I can put all the bags and all the roof in there but having said that, that is a bit awkward if you're taking the roof on and off so I put the roof on, first bag, this one tuck that under, under there like that computer bag I can fix in that hole there the big bag right, it's there and my camera bag I can go there and then if I actually want to take the roof off I can fold it all up the canvas bit of the roof will sit there and the window bits, these bits here, fit behind the seat. So there you go, there's top tips, are very useful I hope for all Project 7 owners, all 250 of us, how you pack bags into a Project 7. So yeah, um, we're a little late, this is just a nice place to stay, we've overstayed, had a great breakfast here, it's quarter to ten, and I think we've got about eight hours to do before we get onto a bit more, a really interesting bit of road in the route Napoleon. And after two years or so since we've been in France, I just can't wait to drive some proper roads up into the mountains of France. like this. 
Look at that rain shower just ahead. I think there's a, is that something on the half shoulder? No, I can't get over that. You don't often see rain arrive at a line like that. Oh, flip. I'm very glad the roof is on though. Here we go. They did forecast it, but I didn't expect it looking at the clouds. You saw a big cloud up there, but yeah, last time we brought the Project 7 down here, it absolutely lashed out most of the way down. It is just a shower, but you can see blue sky ahead. But yeah, there you go. It does rain in France as well. Right. At least it's cleaned the windscreen. My camera assistant was saying, can we clean the windscreen? There you are, Vin. No, it just ends up there as soon as it arrives. There's the rain. I hope that's the last bit of rain we see. Yeah, we're still bombing down, but it's about, I don't know, 220, 250 kilometres to Lyon. We're sort of heading down towards Macon. And it's one o'clock, well, half past, what, 20 past one. An easy run so far, it has to be said. I hope you can hear me. I did a decibel check because it is, does generate some wind noise, this roof. But it actually came out at about 78, 79 decibels. It wasn't as loud as I thought, thought it was going to be. I think with the road noise from tyres, it's sort of down below, but because the roof is just there, as it were, you sort of notice it more. And it just curves around here. It's just a rustle from the rear screens. But I'm pleased if you look up actually at the roof rail, if you just turn the camera around, just look at this roof. There are no leaks. That was a pretty good rain test and um, there was no leaks whatsoever. So the roof does work, I find, really very well. It is properly waterproof and much better than that roof I had on the 550 Marquetta. We're heading, I use Waze, okay, if you want to swing around to here got ways on here I don't bother with the um, standard sat nav on it we just use ways it just phone rests on there very easily and it just sort of puts it's better on traffic and things like that but this is the sector at which is a road I wanted to do that links on then links on to route Napoleon I've got the cruise control set at 85 miles an hour 137 kilometers an hour because I know that's 81, 82 miles an hour or 130 kilometer true speed. And then I don't have to worry if there are John Darts, which we have spotted by the side of the road. They are definitely more active than they ever used to be. They need to raise revenue in France and that's one of the ways they can do it, I suppose. We're not due to arrive in Apt until 19.30, half past seven at night. I really wanted to get there about six o'clock, but there is traffic apparently in Lyon that I'm hoping is gonna clear as we head closer down to our sort of destination. So it's half past one by now. I'm hoping by about five o'clock it might have cleared. Right, we're arriving at Lyon. And I really don't understand ways it's, we have done, uh, today we've done about 440, 450 miles, half past three, so that's five and a half hours to do, yeah, 400 miles. And we've been, yeah, averaging a good speed, 70 miles an hour or thereabouts. But it is predicted the next 180 miles are going to take four hours, 11 minutes, which I just don't understand. But also, I've, many times on European trips, I have mentioned this little tag. If you, zoom out you see this in the windscreen this tag here it allows you to go through the tag these automatic barriers that you sort of head over to the left 
and even the one that everybody else takes, where's this Audi going to go? Is he going to go into that one? And yeah, you don't have to pick up a ticket. It registers where you are. There you are. It registers, and off you go. And it is an absolute boom in a right-hand drive car to be able to go through the tolls, the payages on French auto routes like that. I find it inexplicable why almost every UK regular user of French auto routes doesn't have one. It is so easy to get one in the UK. There's a link on the Eurotunnel website and I'll flash a link in the description of this video as well. Uh, the last one I had last seven years, so it has its own internal battery. You pay a 20 euro deposit on it and that's it. So when you, you go to drive to France, it then automatically charges, you get an invoice and it goes to your credit card a few days later at the end of the month. It's impossibly easy and I could get my 20 euro deposit back on my flat battery one when I send it back into them. So I got a new one, it's a smaller tag, um, but I could get my money back on it at any time. If you use French auto routes, just get a Liberty T tag. It'd make your life so much easier. The wrestling with that ticket and the credit card that doesn't work and not going close enough, all that nonsense is out the window. Anyway, at this time, if you look at ways here, I am hoping it's telling Porky Pies that it's going to take four hours to do the next 180 miles. That can't be right, but let's see. Yeah, Leon is full of tunnels. I think this is the one where you're suddenly against the river. There's a huge river going through Leon. So you come out of here, round here. You think, well, this is all a bit grotty. But it does get better. There's also this mad building here, which I would hate to have been the builder for it. You look at the drawings and say, are you mad? The architect did have, I don't know what he was on, but he was having fun doing this building and I don't, I think the builders must have hated him. Uh, looks like there are queues after all. Not as bad as they were though, because we're 1920 arrival time. But why have we got queues here? And that also looks like big rain clouds over there as well. So. Might be some more of those on the way. We're abandoning the auto route because the queues have just got suddenly worse and they're even worse further ahead. And uh, yeah, we can't do the canyon that I wanted to do to get to, um, onto the route Napoleon. So we're going, a, a, well, a plan B to, to die um, which is not quite as good a road, but it will bring us into Castellane. And I just want to do Route Napoleon in. I'm also a bit concerned about that weather up there, and whether we've got that to enjoy in a moment. Yeah, so now we are well off piste. I'm not saying this is a recommended route, but I don't like being sat on an auto route that looks really bad. They're, they're predicting 52 minutes of queues and that's not good. So when you're in France, it's always looking, worth looking out for these bis routes. Do you see Marseille and Montpellier bis routes? It's actually where we're going. They're sort of scenic routes, uh, and I've always sort of struck lucky with those. You see one of those and you're on one, where well, you're on a good road generally. They're sort of an alternative route to a certain town at the end of it they sort of label if you want to take a more yeah, scenic route and time isn't of the essence. But this is the start of the rain, rainbows over there, always a big giveaway but rarely get a rainbow without a bit of rain. Yeah, down in that really rain bit seems to be where we're off to.
Well, things have got a whole lot better, as you can see. Sun's out, roads are magic. And uh, yeah, there's, the traffic is sort of disappearing. There's a few cars around. I'll just show you on a map what we ended up doing. So we, the plan today was to come down Lyon, auto route all the way, just charge down, just past Avignon, and hang a left to, if I can see it, apt, APT, this road. It was a sort of shortcut to take you on to Route Napoleon. That was the plan. I'd not done it before, but I've been told it's very pretty, comes through a gorge, known as the Grand Canyon. But when we hit Leon, we went around Leon, and I thought, well, we're going to be all right. And then there was like two hour queues predicted on this part by Valence. We did a queue there, and then suddenly it was a great big one here going down to Orange, and I abandoned and just took a gamble and went left basically on this road to die here and this road we're on now is Col de Cabre which will take us down to Cisteron and then route Napoleon but it's ju I just highlight it because in in this area you basically can't go wrong um, there is not one road you have to pick out it's just scenery like this and every now and then you stumble around on stumble upon one of these cold uh, whatevers and it's ace and they're quite well tarmacked it's not an uber tourist area it's very very pretty and it's just a relief after all that auto route auto routes are the most monotonous road they're terrific because you average 81 miles an hour and you go from a to b but they are a bit dull and uh, it's fantastic when you get off them in this part of france so yeah, from now, I'm gonna, um, we're gonna head down onto Route Napoleon. I'm not sure what the light is. That's why I just thought I'd stop here, having taken the roof off. It was the perfect opportunity, obviously, to take the roof off. It's about 22 degrees now. We've seen a peak of 29 degrees today, um, but up with a bit of elevation, but it's perfectly still. So I'm gonna enjoy some miles in this as the sun goes down, heading off to Antibes. in Port of Voulon in Antibes where we keep the boat. Now yesterday that was a bit of an epic day. It was actually turned into quite an exhausting day, just the number of miles and I sort of forget just how long it takes to do Route Napoleon if you're dashing across from where we went um, south of Lyon to come into Antibes via the N85. That road, I mean it is mega bit of road but it takes, took us about four, four and a half hours. We arrived here at midnight last night and uh, it was quite wary. But the good thing is, if you do do the route Napoleon at 10 p.m. in the evening, you have the road to yourself, apart from the odd fox and things like that we saw. But it was, I mean, it was extraordinary to be on this deserted mega road. The bit I, I sort of missed, just looking back, the timing, 
I wish we were a few hours earlier because there is something when you get to the end of the N85 and you're getting closer to um, grass, the Mediterranean, you're so high up, it just the coastline just appears before you and all the lights of the Riviera and it's a magic moment as you wind off the elevation of where you are, the Massif, come over the Col and drop down into the Riviera and the bustle and the busyness and the warmth. When we're up on the top last night it was about 14 degrees centigrade. By the time we arrived here in Antibes it was 24 degrees centigrade midnight last night and that was a great feeling. So there we go, that's the Project 7. I hope you can sort of see why it's such a firm favourite in the garage. I love the way it plays these two roles this Jekyll and Hyde personality of this car. One minute you're cruising down the auto route, cruise control set, roof on, aircon going, quiet as a mouse, air, um, the automatic gearbox. It just makes it so livable for that type of motoring we do and in town. And then take the roof off, put it in dynamic, dis disable traction control to the track position, and it turns into this wild, wild car. And I've owned this thing for six years and it's not gonna do all 600 horsepower and that 1580 kilos or something. It is full on. With that supercharged engine, the throttle response is instant. It will overload those rear tires anytime you want. Any corner, any anyway, boot it, and it just explodes down the straight. And you think, hang on, I thought there's this cuddly Jaguar. Jaguars don't do this. This is too crazy. And I still describe it as a modern day AC Cobra when they were putting those big seven litre lumps in the front of a Cobra. And that was a crazy combination, this little roadster. But the plus side I find a Jaguar Project 7 is that other, that dual role, that quietness. And maybe some people don't like the roof on it and the, and the fact you have to, you know, it's not electric and stuff, but I'll gladly swap the slight inconvenience of having to manually take the roof off for the weight advantage over an electric folding roof. You know, knocking the door, what well, is it, 240 kilos lighter than a regular F-type convertible with 575 horsepower. Massive. I was looking at its rivals. Nothing gets close to the power to weight of a Project 7. You can look, I mean, that Z8, 400 horsepower versus near 600 or uh, AM, I think the one that got the closest was the um, AMG GTR but it's still um, not quite as light as this and it's turbocharged V8 and it's more production and it's yes it's got an electric roof but this the limited run of this thing you know 250 in the world about 150 to this spec because the US cars are actually about 80 90 kilos heavier because they haven't got the cut down screen and the and the seats so the wild spec like this is the European spec which is about 150 160 cars and yet still after six years the uh, automotive media have never group tested or performance tested this car which I just find inexplicable but wow what a, what a journey that was um, it was a big relief getting to Antibes last night I think the other thing about Route Napoleon um, it's just endless bends um, time it better be aware if you're going to having that first cold car I think it was I'm so glad I found that little road deserted and it's like a, a paratif before you get to Castellane. You drop down into Castellane and then come out of Castellane towards grass. That's the main course of the N85 route Napoleon. So anyway, that's it. We're going to spend a few days on the boat now. Um, I'm not doing a video review of the boat. It's a, it's a private boat and I share it with a few other owners. So that's not fair on them. And the next video will be us going home because there's one more pass that I want to do while we're down here in the Project 7. It's the highest pass in Europe, I understand. I've never done it. It's always been closed because it snows over an instant and it's only open for a few weeks a year. So that's where we'll be heading on the third video of this Euro trip. Anyway, hope you enjoy this video. Have Please keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming on very soon.